Hi, I'm Michael Bailey, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how a clamp coil adapter operates, including the theory on how a coil of wire can multiply the effective current as viewed by a clamp meter, as well as cover the calibration of a clamp coil adapter uh, and how we do it at Transmill. We have set up on our bench a multimeter capable of measuring up to 30 amps. However, as long as your multimeter will measure 10 amps, that's more than adequate to replicate this test. We have a calibrator that is capable of generating 30 amps. Once again, any current source capable of generating up to 10 amps will be perfect. We are passing our current from our calibrator straight into our multimeter with a setting of 0.5 amps. We have a reading here of 0.5 amps. So showing that in this wire, which we will now call our single conductor, we have half an amp flowing. So I'm going to grab our handheld uh, clamp meter, set DC current, the most sensitive range I have, which is the 40 amp range, perform a zero. And now in this wire, we can see we have 0 0.56, 0 0.55 amps flowing. We are using the multimeter as the reference for measuring the current. So we now know the error in this clamp meter with our alignment. So effectively, all a clamp coil adapter is doing is passing more turns through the jaws of the clamp. So with this single wire, it's very easy to demonstrate. So I've created a loop, and at this point here, we can see that we have two turns of the wire. So when I place this through the center of my clamp meter, we are now reading double the original current, one amp. And this will scale for as many turns as your current source is capable of driving. So one, two, three, four, five. So I should now have flowing through here two and a half amps. And we see here I've counted five turns, so I'll try to position this better, and our clamp meter is indicating 2.5 amps, which is five times the original current that we have flowing in the single conductor as verified by our multimeter. It was quite easy to verify how many turns of wire we had because we could count them. We've physically wound these in with our own hands. When verifying a clamp coil adapter that is either sealed or has a large number of turns, so for example 50, counting is not as practical anymore. But what we can do is we can use a process of verifying the current in the single conductor then reducing that current by the proposed multiplier, so we're going to do 10 turns in this example, verify the lower current, and then check the multiplier using the clamp meter that we've just verified. So here I have set the 10 amp range on my multi-product calibrator and my multimeter. I turn the output on. We can see we are measuring 10 amps with my clamp meter. I pass the single conductor through, sorry about the positioning, and we can see we are measuring, so this is me doubling it up, 10 amps on the single conductor with this clamp meter. I now change my wiring. I want to apply one amp into the one amp range of my multimeter, but connect up my clamp coil in the path as well. So I'm going to disconnect this wire, plug in my clamp, clamp coil adapter into the one amp, plug my return into the common on the rear of the coil, make the other changes, so I'm now connected to the one amp range on my 8104, apply one amp, and put my clamp meter around the 10 turn coil. As we can see, there's a slight error due to the alignment. However, we are measuring 10 amps. Because there can only be completed turns, there can only be either open circuit, 
too few turns, too many turns, or 10 turns. If there were nine turns instead of 10, we would be reading nine amps. If there were 11 turns instead of 10, or any other multiplier, we'd be reading 11 or more. But we can verify that there are 10 turns inside here because our clamp meter is re reading 10 amps. Now you can follow this process for each variety of multiplier that your coil adapter offers. And this way you can be sure that you have the correct number of turns without having to physically break the coil apart and count them or have to verify at higher currents. Because the operation of a coil is a physical factor, there will be 10 turns inside this no matter what current I pass through. I could pass 30 amps, which would give me 300 amps. I could pass one amp, which is giving me 10 amps. It doesn't matter how much current or what frequency, the number of turns does not change. The factors which do change will be the alignment of the clamp meter, which is reduced using the transmill design, and the actual current being delivered by the source. So if you increase, if you switch to AC and start increasing the frequency, that will be harder for the calibrator to drive. And you may see either an increase in the current or a decrease as the feedback starts to lose control of the outputs. But this is down to the driving, uh, the current source behind the coil, not the coil itself. When we calibrate a coil at Transmill, we use the previously described method by passing 19 amps through the single conductor, 19 amps being a current which most labs can measure very easily, that um, as many popular multimeters will measure at least 20 amps. Most multi-product calibrators will source at least 20 amps. So a laboratory has this um, equipment available. So you pass 19 amps through the single conductor, measure the single conductor with your clamp meter to define the error, and then apply the divisions to the coil. So for example, to verify the 10 turn coil, you would pass 1.9 amps in the sink through into the coil, and then verify that your clamp meter indicates 19 amps. Once again, it's very clear if the number of turns is incorrect. If you have one too many turns, it will indicate 20.9 amps. So it's very clear, even given the resolution of most clamp meters.